that feeling of knowing you can't do it and your kid is dying to do it already feels like <laughs> like a magician hey moms out there i'm Haley andrews and welcome to another episode of mom ish on this episode we're going to be talking about something i am extremely passionate about it's something that has really been a struggle behind my struggle and that is the topic of mom shame this is a topic i care about a lot because of how often it occurs and the way in which it occurs i can't even wrap my head around the fact that the most shame comes from these three outlets moms get shamed from other moms close friends family or relatives and lastly those outsiders that don't even know who we are yeah i said it outsiders like people who don't even know you have you ever been at the grocery store and your child whatever the age may be is having basically the world's worst day you went in for one two maybe three things and they have lost their mind thirty thousand times you already feel the burning sense of embarrassment right and you're checking out just waiting to get yourself to the car and there's that one person behind you that says oh you really shouldn't yell at them like that okay let me stop you right there first of all those people are my enemies number one who the hell do you think you are number two do you even know what my morning's been like? What my kid's been through all day? Do you even know why my kid's melting down? Do you even know why these people and these outsiders who don't even know us? Why do we let them bring us down? Why does their one tiny little comment just push us over the edge? Moms, they have no right to even think about judging you. Not to mention, say something to your face. So let's do this. Let's flip the switch. Instead of letting them shame us, why don't we put them in their place and say, thank you so much for your advice. However, you have no idea what I've been through and your advice, while it's appreciated, is definitely not needed. So have a great day. Because most of the time, these outsiders, they don't expect a response from you. So let's not let them shame us. Let's put them in their place. I can't tell you how many times I have let these outsiders and their unwanted advice literally make me feel like the world's worst mom. And then by the time I get to my car, after already feeling defeated, I'm sitting there crying, thinking, oh, maybe they were right. And then there I am letting that outsider make me question every single thing that I am as a parent. And who the hell are they? Anyways, okay moms, this next example is for those of you who have more than one child, maybe more than one dad to each child, and maybe either aren't married, aren't in a relationship, or rep in this single mama life. How many of you have had those outsiders comment on, what's your marital status? Or, not even just that, when you tell outsiders about yourself or you're talking about your life have you ever said so i'm a mom and i have three kids and the first thing they say is and you don't have a husband or and you're doing it by yourself oh my gosh first of all single mamas y'all got strength beyond belief when i was a single mom that was one of the most hurtful comments to me i felt less than or like, what do they want me to do? Go find just some random dude to call my boyfriend just so my child had a male? If you're a single mom and you're watching this, I just want you to know that's probably the best thing you could ever be to your kid because you and only you are showing them unconditional love without another person being involved and you keep doing that you keep doing you single mama until you find that perfect man that perfect male role model that will help 
your attempt to showing your kiddos what unconditional love really is. So for all those outsiders that judge single moms, they can go to hell. Why do we feel so ashamed, number one, by telling them the truth, number two, by our truth not being what they want to hear? No, I'm not married. No, I don't have a boyfriend. And my kids have different dads. The look on their face, first of all, is the first part of shame just overwhelming you, right? Second, their response. Oh, yep that shame is overwhelming you again. Why do we let those outsiders and their opinions make us feel ashamed? Guess what? I'm a mom, I have three kids. My son has a different dad than my other twins. And guess what? I'm not in a relationship with any of those people. I'm married now, but I've been a single mom. I've also been a mom in a relationship. I've also been a mom in no relationship. And now it's so weird that now either wearing a wedding ring, number one, or saying I have a husband completely changes the demeanor of those outsiders in their opinion. So the last example I wanted to talk about that moms get shamed from outsiders is our lifestyle. Whatever your lifestyle may be, those outsiders, they're going to judge it. They're going to criticize it and they're gonna leave you feeling shamed. So my lifestyle I think has changed from being a mom of one kid to being a mom of three kids. So I'm gonna kind of talk about both. As a mom of one, when I was a single mom and I was raising my son, going to school, working full time, the lifestyle I had was non-existent, I guess. But because I only had one kid, I had a lot of support and a lot of family members that were very interested and eager to help me out. Whether it was to watch him while I went to night school or help watch him when I worked on a weekend or even, you know, watch him for me to go hang out with my friends. I was 20 when I had my first child, so I still had what I thought was a life or wanted to try and have one. Well, that attempt to have a life while being a single mom was the outsider's best attempt at leaving me feeling so ashamed. The second I was away from my child, involved in some type of fun, was the second those outsiders poured their judgment and their criticism, whether they shared it with me or it was just their vibe, it was like, no matter what I did, if I wasn't wrapped around my child spending 24 seven with him, the judgments poured in. My lifestyle as a mom now, moving into a mom of three, let's just say my lifestyle is do whatever it takes to not take them in public. <laughs> People can still have judgments about that. I do my best to keep my chaos here and not in front of all the critics. Those outside people still leave me feeling ashamed that I can't, I just, I'm not good enough of a mom to take all three of my kids out in public by myself or my lifestyle doesn't involve, you know, pumpkin patches and Christmas lights. But what those people don't understand is in order to do all of those things and have that lifestyle, not only does it take a huge amount of patience, it also takes money. And while all these people can sit there and criticize and judge the lifestyle I live as a mom of three, they have no idea how hard it is to live this lifestyle, whether I like it or not. Who are they to judge my lifestyle? They've never stepped foot in my shoes or yours. Okay, so we talked about outsiders and how they make us moms feel shamed. The next category or area that most moms find themselves feeling ashamed or 
getting mom shamed from, and I can't believe I'm even saying this, is other moms. Seriously, how many of you know other moms who spend countless hours judging other moms? It drives me crazy. We are all in the same boat. How on earth is it that one mom can even think to judge another mom? Yeah, we may be different moms, but we all have experienced some type of shame. So why are we judging each other? Ugh. So my first example of moms shaming other moms is appearance. How many of you have woken up and just felt like, Ugh, I do not feel like getting ready today. I'm about to throw this hair in a messy bun and get things done. But then find yourself thinking, Ugh, but what if someone sees me or oh, I have to go to that one birthday party and there's gonna be a lot of people there, so I have to get ready. Let me just say this. I am not your average mom when it comes to looks. <laughs> uh, I very rarely brush my hair. I hate it, it takes too much time. And before I started my business with Monet, I'm pretty darn sure my hair was in a messy bun for days on end. Let me just tell you, I very rarely went in public looking put together. Because guess what? I very rarely have enough time to even get my humans together looking presentable. Why is it that we feel the need to judge other moms for looking like a hot mess? Because let me tell you, we all look a hot mess behind these filters and highlight reels we post on Facebook. If I want to look a hot mess, let me look a hot mess. We are all moms. There is absolutely no reason we should be making other moms feel ashamed. Why? Okay, let me move to the next thing. So the first example that moms shame other moms, obviously, is how we look. The second is the appearance of our house. What's the first thing you say when you have company coming over? I'm sorry it's such a mess. I just, I didn't have time to clean. Guess what? I'm not sorry that my house is a mess and I really wish it was picture perfect, but it's not. Stop making us feel ashamed for living in our houses. Nobody with children should have a picture perfect house that is all put together all the time. And if they do, please let me know how they do it because I seriously feel like all of us clean, every single day, all day, for our houses not to be clean and constantly apologize for what our houses look like. But we all have messy houses because we're moms. How many of you have tried your best to make your house look cute and you've decorated or you've spent time on that perfect little collage area above your couch and you have your friends over and they're like, oh, that picture is crooked. If you only knew how much time and effort I put into that one teeny tiny spot in my house, you wouldn't be saying that. Stop shaming other moms. Start supporting them. Whether you agree with them or not, we have no reason to make each other feel so ashamed. Okay, my last example of how moms shame other moms is how often they are away from their kids or how often moms tend to cancel plans. Let me share a little bit of how this relates to my life. When I became a mom of one, I was always involved in any and every single mom thing that I could be involved in. I tried my best to be at everybody's birthday party. I tried my best to still have a life. As I became a mom of three and my life got a little bit more difficult. Anytime I was invited somewhere and I decided to take my crew with me, I left that place feeling so ashamed. I was probably in tears. Every time that I was in an environment with all my kids, the criticism and judgments overwhelmed me to a point that I began to exclude myself from things when I was invited. Almost so much that 
people stopped inviting me anyways. I remember someone told me, so you do realize when you get married, because you haven't been able to make it to so many weddings, most people won't wanna to come to your wedding. And I remember thinking to myself, wow, that hurt. If somebody doesn't wanna to come to my wedding simply because I wasn't able to get my whole crew together and have the guts to bring them all to your wedding just to get ridiculed. Being such an outgoing person, I've always been such a goer, a mover, a busy body. As a mom, I used to be that way, but the more and more times I tried to take my kids to this event or that, or I took my kids in public, the more I left feeling so filled with shame. And so leaving all those places feeling with nothing but shame obviously made me not want to go in public. So being the person that I am, I always made plans or try to make plans. And then it's like the closer and closer it got to those plans, the more anxiety that I felt. And then sure enough, the day came and it was like, there was no way I was going or there was no way that plan was gonna be happening. I was totally not following through with whatever plan I made. And as much as it sucked or it was embarrassing to me, how often I canceled plans. It was even more embarrassing how often people noticed. And then it got to the point where the judgments and criticisms came like, oh, you're not gonna come anyways, or why would I invite you just for you to say no? But moms, have you ever felt like, I'm trying, I wish I could come, I wish I had the ability to bring my children into a public place without them acting like total a-holes, and I wish it wasn't like this. If you've ever felt that way, then when someone cancels plans, remember that if you find yourself with a mom canceling plans on you, try and remember that she probably wants to be there. She probably wishes she could be there. So instead of making her feel bad, just give her a little credit. That's seriously all I wish. I wish somebody would just give me a little bit of credit because getting three humans ready and presentable is hard enough as it is. Not to mention adding getting yourself presentable and then getting your mindset ready for whatever is thrown at you, honestly, that's a really hard task. And so canceling is way easier. So next time someone cancels on you, give that mama a little bit of credit. So the last category or area that I think that most moms find themselves being mom shamed, and again, I can't wrap my head around this, but family, friends, and those closest to you. Where do I even begin? This is probably the toughest part of this topic for me. I broke it up into three examples just as the others and this part is really really true to my heart because I don't know how to explain how much of the guilt and shame I feel has come from family, friends, basically people that I would consider close to me. And that's probably the most hurtful thing, which is why I left it for last. All right, so my first example of mom shame from family or close friends is discipline. Have you ever been at a family function or family gathering and you're attempting to discipline your child or children and the way that you choose to discipline your children might not be the way your family or relatives discipline or believe you should be disciplining your children. Yeah, well, let me tell you. I've had my fair share of family gatherings that haven't ended so well simply because of my discipline choices. And because they're my family, you would think that they would never want to hurt you or leave you feeling less than or, you know, I don't know, shaming you. But I think most of the time, family or relatives, before they give you their criticism or their judgment, they give you a little disclaimer. In my experience, it usually sounds like this. I just want to help or I've been in your shoes before or if I were you, and because of that disclaimer, I think it's like supposed to be understood or expected that 
whatever they're gonna say next is not allowed to hurt me. Newsflash, it hurts worse because you're not supposed to hurt me or judge me or criticize me or if you do have criticisms, judgments, advice, whatever the case may be, have you ever thought that whatever advice, thoughts, or judgments you may have regarding my discipline or parenting, have you ever thought it might be best to just keep it to yourself? Have you ever thought you may bring more hurt than help? Because in my case, I'm pretty sure no matter how helpful they've intended to be, they've left way more hurt than help. Another example of this, and I know a lot of moms gave feedback similar. How many of you discipline your children a certain way and grandparents that might be involved disagree? How many of you have those same grandparents that disagree in front of your children? Me again? I can't tell you how many times I have been disciplining my children in whatever way I see fit and have had a grandparent share their thoughts and disagreements with how my parenting or disciplining choices are wrong or how they affect my children in front of my children. Let's just say this, cool, you have your thoughts, you have your advice, you have your opinions, that's fine. Well, I wish number one, you would keep them to yourself, but I really wish you wouldn't share them in front of my children because that makes me not only feel so ashamed, but it makes my children doubt whatever it is I may be disciplining them for. So, hey, here's an idea. Judge, criticize, and give your unwanted advice in a private place. Okay, so the second thing I find most moms get mom shamed for by family or relatives of some kind Tattoos. I think our generation is definitely the generation of tattoos. And while most of my tattoos, actually all of my tattoos are unseen with clothing on, I can tell you the day I got my tattoo on my arm, I don't know if you can see it. I think my family about had 10 heart attacks. I mean, I don't really know what it is about tattoos and family, but mine just don't get along. I remember one time my grandma said something along the lines of, your tattoos, what are you gonna do in your wedding dress? They're all gonna be seen. And I said, well, yeah, I didn't get tattoos to hide them. I like my tattoos, I want them to be seen. But unfortunately, our generation, like I said, is a little bit different. So, so I don't know why I let their comments about my tattoos leave me feeling ashamed, like I did something wrong or I don't know, I'm less of a parent. I usually have some smart ass comment or response like, hey, at least I don't have tattoos on my face. But because our generation is pro tattoos and our family and relatives come from a time that if you had tattoos, you weren't a good person or whatever the case may be. They seem to think that sharing their opinions or judgments about your tattoos is going to keep you from getting more. And unfortunately, the result is usually the opposite. And those judgments and criticisms actually have made me want to get more. But unfortunately, tattoos is one of those things that family and relatives, they just can't keep it in their brain. They gotta give you their thoughts and opinions on that. And because it's someone that's close to you and someone that's a big part of your life, of course, you feel an overwhelming sense of shame because while your decision to get however many tattoos you have is something that you decided and you agree with, their disagreement with that decision still leaves the kind of stinging feeling like, is there anything I do that my family finds is right? And does it matter how many tattoos I have? And does how many tattoos I have matter when you're talking about the type of mom I am? Does my family think that I'm not a good mom because I have tattoos? I guess that's the kind of feeling or thought 
I get and feel ashamed of when family or relatives criticize or judge the tattoos or amount of tattoos or kind of tattoos that I have, whether they're tasteful in their opinion or not. And even though I love my tattoos, seriously, well, most of them, it still doesn't feel good when family members make me feel like I'd be a lot better mom if I didn't have tattoos. So yeah, how many of you moms out there are tatted up and your family just can't handle it? Comment below and tell me about your tats and your family's reaction. I definitely wanna hear them. So the last example I have about mom shame coming from family or relatives and close friends is life goals. So this is something I could probably go on and on about, but okay. So I'm supposed to be sharing my example, right? Or my story in relation to this, but it's difficult for me because my life goals have changed so much over the course of motherhood. I've always known I wanted to go to school and I've always wanted to prove everyone wrong. So anyone that doubted me, I wanted to prove them wrong. And unfortunately, no matter how hard I try, I can't prove everyone wrong that doubts me because let me just say, there's a lot of people out there that doubt me. But I think most of us moms feel so ashamed because our family has such high expectations of us achieving our goals. Of course, because they want us to be successful. They want our lives to be better than theirs. They want us to provide for our children and they worry about whether we will or won't based on our life goals. But why do they feel it's necessary to share those doubts or judgments or criticize whatever it is that our life goals may be when they have no idea how hard it is to even begin the journey to a better life. I may have these life goals, A, B, C, D, whatever, this list of all the goals for my life. But that doesn't mean that all the accomplishments will match my goals. And you know how hard that is to accept as a mom? Because we work day in, day out, 24 seven. All we ever think about is a better life for our kids. So naturally we have huge goals, but that doesn't mean we're able to achieve them. And when someone that's close to us shares something like doubt or criticizes or judges the fact that either our goals aren't what they think they should be or our goals aren't good enough or that we haven't even achieved our goals. When someone close to you shares that doubt or disbelief or disappointment in your goals or the lack of your ability to achieve them, they have no idea how much that hurts. Okay, let me tell you a story. I always knew I wanted to be a teacher. Hell, I did not know it was gonna take me eight years to get a bachelor's degree, but I worked my ass off and when I walked across the stage with my bachelor's degree from U of H, number one, I graduated second in my class, magna cum laude. Number two, my son was four and my boy girl twins were not even two months old. That was a life goal that had taken forever for me to achieve and somehow it still wasn't good enough for me, for my family, I mean, I was ashamed that it took me so long to get a degree. I was ashamed that I still wasn't gonna live a life that was gonna provide for my kids without struggle. So my next life goal was to pursue my teaching career and that still wasn't good enough. I remember the day I decided to pursue graduate school. My expectation was that I would have so much support and my family would be excited that I was interested in becoming more educated and achieving yet another degree, allowing my life and my ability to provide to be easier because I had a degree of a higher status. Wrong. I remember a family member 
not a close family member, but close enough. I remember sharing my plans for grad school in the beginning with a small group of extended family members and this is what I was told. Are you sure that's a really good idea? I mean, your kids have already had to go through so much struggle while you've been in school and you already haven't been able to provide them with the life they deserve. Do you really think going to school again is the best thing for their lives? Okay, if you know me, you know it's real hard for me not to tell you how it is, but let me just say, the moment I heard that, my entire body just filled with complete shame. I felt frozen. I paused, attempting to collect my thoughts, and all I could think of was, wait, were my kids really struggling so much while I was trying to better myself by going to school? Have I been doing it all wrong? Wait, is this a good idea? Wait, maybe I need to change my goals altogether. And I remember thinking, keep in mind, this is a relative that's a distant kind of relative. So I shouldn't have let her statement leave me feeling so inadequate. But to this day, I hear that comment in my mind over and over and over as I'm pursuing my master's degree. Because at the end of the day, my life goal is that my children see the importance of education. My children are able to understand that anything is possible and that my children know that there's no age, time frame, time limit to accomplishing your goals. And the only way I can make sure they know that is living by example. But I can't help but tell you the truth is that comment will forever replay in my head and leave me feeling like maybe this isn't the best decision. How many of you moms have life goals that your family, friends, or relatives seem to feel like their input should change those goals? Man, I tell you, I know all my goals have been difficult to find support I may not be able to give my kids all these things that other moms and my family may think my kids deserve. And guess what? My kids do deserve those things. But my life goals and your life goals, mama, they matter. And you can do it. Coming from experience, don't give up. And don't let the criticism, the judgment, and the unfortunate, unwanted advice from family, friends, or people that you consider close to you. Don't let them shame you into doubting your life goals because only you can decide what's best for your life. Whether it's outsiders, other moms, or family and friends, or people that are close to you that are leaving you feeling less than, left out, inadequate, or just ashamed, because of their criticisms or judgments. I'm right there with you, sister. But you're doing the best job that you can do and their opinion doesn't matter. So whatever those people say or whatever judgments you may feel this week, do your best to change your mindset on how they affect you. Because remember, they have no idea what it's like to walk a day in your shoes and you're doing a damn good job. So. Thanks for watching this episode of Mom-ish. Don't forget to like and subscribe and share this episode. And tune in next week for another episode of Mom-ish.